Well, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hairbrain Games. Today, we're going to take a look at Alubare, a nice cup of tea. In Alubare, you're going to place one to four players that are dealing with the 1856 explosion of tea across the landscape. You're going to be laying track, you're going to be building tea estates, you're going to be looking into weather, you're going to be trying to figure out the best way to build the best tea empire you you can build. That's right, T. All right, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at Alabari, a nice cup of tea. Get out of here. Alabari, a nice cup of tea. For starters, we have this nice board. It's a mounted board, very nice, excellent artwork, just lots and lots of subtle details inside the artwork too like you'll uh nice touches anyway as players you'll start at siliguri town you will make your way across the tracks communally until you arrive at darjeeling along the way players will be doing things to advance themselves what kind of things well they'll be building tea estates or gaining ownership of tea estates this here is the, for a two-player game, you have this row of tea estates that you will build on. You'll notice there are several spots on each card, and each card has a shovel number and a victory point number. So players that unearth... This is rubble. These are rubble cubes. So as you go on, as you unearth, if you unearth all of the, the rubble off of a given place, you can take ownership of it, and that will give you tea leaves at certain points in the game and victory points at the end of the game. Oh. Where's my... There we go. So you have to keep careful to keep these all <clears throat> in their spot. Anyway, this row, which I formerly call the Rubble Alliance, will be filled up over time, or be unearthed over time, and players will gain more and more ownership of different tea estates. As well, uh, players have actions. They have their workers, and you're going to actually place these workers on these worker locations to do actions. Now, they start off pretty simple. Grab resources. You can dig... Uh, you can convert resources, lay tracks, because as you're laying tracks, you're going to get points for it. You're also going to open up other opportunities for building along those tracks. Uh, then again, building or take a train, to, well, an, an engineer. So for example, if you have resources, you can obtain special bonuses as you build along the track. Certain gates limit you from just building anywhere, but we'll get to that later. And you can also uh, get tea leaves. Now, we'll talk about tea leaves later, because it's all about the tea. That's right iced tea baby all right and then you have engineering tracks now these provide special bonuses you can grab these trains and pay their initial cost up here and then you get the special bonus you get victory points again and you have the ability each turn to unlock an extra worker if you pay them enough chai it's to chai for anyway so we have that, we have these, we've got resources in this bag that continually get unearthed over time, and players will grab those. You have the Chai track. Chai is a very interesting boost. The key here is that all of these actions can be boosted if you want to use Chai. So, say you had, you wanted to say grab resources. Well, normally you can grab three, but if you use a chai you can grab five resources here you can dig a little stronger here you can convert a lot more here you can lay more tracks here you can do more stuff like i don't know i mean if first you don't succeed well chai chai again anyway and finally we have contract card contract cards allow you to uh and that's this this spot here allow you to take uh, special abilities and you can use them during whatever phase they're in this is the G phase so before or after you take a normal action you could use one of these cards you use it once a game so once it's done it's done but this is important too if you lay three track you can use that at the end of the game you take those tracks and you use it to get 24 points 24 points 24 points is amazing now what else do we have we're gonna get down to the weather to the weather and the weather gets controlled over time. There's three types of weather. It's cloudy, it's sunny, it's rainy. And each of these has an impact on your tracks for what potency you have for certain actions. So right now, it is nothing because we're just starting the game. But if it's rainy, well, you can't dig as much and you can't lay as much track because it's rainy. But your tea grows. 
But if it's cloudy, well, some of these spots will cover up spots here and make it harder for players to actually uh, accomplish things, or at least they'll, they'll be starved that opportunity. When it's sunny, well, you can dig a lot more because it's a sunny day, and who doesn't like digging on a sunny day? And you can lay more track. These will change and adjust over time. If they ever get to the end, it triggers a, uh, a tea, tea explosion. And that means anybody with ownership here is going to get these leaves. Now, leaves are very important. These are victory points in certain ways, and they also drive the feeding of, of uh, your contract cards as well. Uh, and they can also be converted to chai, because chai is a commodity that you don't have a lot of in the game, but you're going to want to use it whenever you can. And that's it. That's really what we have for components in Alabari. Now let's take a look at gameplay and see how we roll. All right, so let's start by going over our turns now. We're going to start with purple, and we're going to start with yellow. This is the starting player token. It goes to whoever had T first. That wouldn't be me. So we're going to do purple. All right, so here we go. All right, so what you do on your turn, oh, there's three setup steps that happen, but they don't happen on turn one. We'll do those on turn two. Basically, it's just placing your actions. Now, generally speaking, you'll probably start off with wanting to do resource gathering. You can choose this location, which lets you take any three resources, or you can choose this location, which lets you take any three resources, and you get to keep or take the start player token. They go in order, so there's a possibility that some of the resources you want might not be available if you take the second spot. We're going to go ahead and take the first spot. We can take up to three resources. We don't have any ch shy, and so we're going to go ahead and decide here. Now, I'm going to take two of these, and I'm going to take one chai. Now chai is different. When you're done with chai, it disappears from the game and you simply move up on the chai track. All right. And uh, that is the, well, okay, first off, we don't actually do that yet. Let's be honest here. We don't do that till everybody makes their moves. But now you saw a turn in action ahead of time. Now it's yellow's turn. Yellow too wants to take resources. They get the start player token. And then Right now, our track is at three for digging power. So let, let's dig. That's right, I dig it. And then, yellow wants to go, you know what, I think, I think I want one of these trains. Because these trains give me special abilities, extra points. You know what, I am going to go ahead and or I could take one of these. Ooh. Haha. -ha. That's kind of cool. No, we're going to go ahead and place it there. All right. Only two workers to start off with, so choices matter. Now we resolve the actions left to right. Again, we're going to take these two resources and we're going to take this chai. It goes out of the game. We advance our chai track one. All right. Next. Now, we don't have any chai, so he's going to take three cubes. He's okay with it. Now, these cubes are going to come into play. You, you use these, you convert these, you do things with these. It all matters as you go down the track. Um, we'll get into that shortly. And then, digging time. Now, what happens when you dig is you have a level three digging. He could power it up with chai. If she wanted to. So let's do that. We're going to actually spend our chai right away. And we're going to use that chai. So now 3 plus 3 is 6. Now you have rubble power. Rubble, rubble. Power of 6. So remove 3. And remove 3. And then we take ownership of these T estates. That's an awesome bonus. And rubble. Now here's where it gets interesting. Why are you getting these resources? Because A. You're going to pay for these when you do building. Now you can build... Right now, nobody can build because we haven't laid the first track. Anything from the last, when you, these blue spaces are significant. Once a track is laid here, and we'll show that in a second, then you can place, you can build all, any of these, any of these, any of these up to the next blue track. So uh, that means that that rubble is going to come in handy here. You could use six rubble and get four victory points by claiming ownership of that, or four for two, or eight for a special card. Bonuses such as that. All right, so 
that's that. Uh, that's actually a pretty good move for our purple player. And then yellow takes a card. Now, the choice is either to build, which we again, we can't do because we need that track laid first in order to build here, or grab one of these special lines and he... Yes, construction work gang. Now, what does this do for me? Well, at the end of the game, it's nine points. Uh, at the start of my turn, I could trade in a, a chai tea in order to use, for that session only, my extra worker. At the end of that session, they go back. So you always have to spend chai to get a third worker. And it has a special ability for us. For when I'm uh, building or getting an engineer, you, I get a discount of two rubble or one stone whenever I build. Again, building is building in these little slots next to these areas. Okay, and that's it. That's the end of turn round one. So what do we do? Well, the first thing we do to wrap up is we flip that over. We move those over. We flip that over. And then we move these down. And we resolve. Now, unfortunately, our digging is now two instead of three because it's raining, it's pouring. Darn that snoring. The track goes down again. We're still at one, but it would be nice to be able to lay more track. That's going to become powerful later. And boost. We've boosted up our track so to getting more potentially uh, leaf production to be higher. Mm -hmm. Then we look here and go, oh, that's a cloudy day. I've got sunshine, but not on this cloudy day. And then finally, we refresh our cubes. Now, in different player counts, you're going to have different amounts that you grab. For for one to two players, we're going to grab six cubes. And we're going to place these cubes. I'm grabbing from the secret stash of awesomeness. All right, so we've got two chai, and that's awesome. And... This is an event cube. It goes here. What does that mean? At certain points in here, there are white cubes. Those white cubes are going to basically trigger events that happen at certain intervals, judging by the power of who grabs them. And then you resolve the actions. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they it's a rotisserie chicken of a thing. So you go around, and uh, once you get to this spot, then these three cubes go in. So you're going to have these events happening throughout the game. The first one is Excavate. Excavate says, remove all robo cubes from the next two estate spaces. Put a game ownership token in those spaces. Now, what does that mean? It means that this and this are now owned by the game. That means we, the valuable viewers, do not get to take part in the awesomeness when it's time to resolve these and get tea leaves for these. Boo-hoo. Bad, bad game. Okay, and that's it. And then we start on another round, and it's exactly the same thing. We're going to place our workers. This time, we're going to start here because the start player token's here. So... We're going to do this. I'm going to show you this here. I'm going to place you. This lets me convert resources. Three iron cubes can become one track. Track's important. We'll find out later. Uh, rubble can be stone. Stone can be rubble because here you'll notice that stone and rubble are for different things. And so you're going to go back and forth. Let's do this. And then we'll do this to lay track to show you that contract card there okay so again we're going to grab resources we'll grab one chai one iron and one chai all right now oh and now here we're going to convert three of these resources into a train track tracks Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then we're going to lay track. Now, I could, I don't have any chai tea, but I could power up the chai tea right now if I had any to get to let me lay more track. But, you know, honestly, I can, I can only lay. Yeah. So one is the, is the base and then chai would let me three, but I only have one track, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to lay this track. How am I going to do it? I'm going to take one of my ownership cubes. And I am going to lay track here. That's That has now opened up the possibility for all of these to be built upon. You can now use build actions to start spending resources, like you could expend three, place in, like you know, on their turn to, to go ahead and 
uh, get the extra worker, like without having to pay a chai. Uh, you could spend iron. You could, you, I mean, you'll see the values of these as they go on. And again, all the way up till here. Only when we unlock this do these become available. And only when this is unlocked, do these become available, etc. And this is really the flow of the game. I'm going to show you one more thing before we call it good, and that is grabbing these cards. Again, you saw those in the component breakdown, but you can buy these cards. You can use them as a one time action, and they do different things when you're done at the end of the game there's a variety of things you're going to get points for one of which is can you power it so uh if you if you laid three track uh and and you can you know then you can put them on there or whatever if you laid three track you get 24 if you can't complete these you don't get any points for them you don't lose any points for them but you don't get any points for them so you definitely want to keep the contract cards in view as you're building and planning out uh, other things a little simple like you can do it one time use of iron and make it act like steel bars and again if you finish one track you can place it on here and get four points etc and that's it at the end of the game you will go through you'll earn points for there you'll earn points for here you'll earn points for your contract cards you'll earn points for your you'll earn points okay and points are t uh, that way you have a pointy good time. Anyway, that's it for Alabari as far as a general idea of how to play the game. Now let's get into my final thoughts on Alabari. A nice cup of tea. Alright, let's talk about Alabari. A nice cup of tea. Alright, as always, I like to go over the cons first, then the pros, then the final summary. So let's go over the cons. Um... When it comes to Alabari, there's really nothing new under the sun here, or any type of weather that it depicts. It, uh, if you're looking for cleverness or some innovative hook beyond the premise of tea, then this is not likely to be the game that's going to tickle your fancy. It's a refining fire, not a revolutionary fire, let's put it that way. If you own Snowdonia, the game that, it, that precedes it, it's in enhancement by subtraction, not addition. Uh, I, I would probably own both, but I could not think of a solid rationale as to why. Uh, yeah, that's okay. And, uh, and one tiny nitpick is that there's a, in, in some sort of homage to randomizing the, 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 the conditions of play at the start, uh, for probably replayability or whatever, the, the, the game provides you with eight trains. You use seven of them. That's really not that variable. It almost makes me wonder why they didn't just use seven trains and not eight. So, uh, there's, yeah, there's not a lot of widespread variables here, so you're not going to find that your play is radically different based on radically different inputs to the game. There's, there are subtle, subtle variabilities, but nothing that's going to alter play in a way that you wouldn't find maybe the game getting a little samey if you played it time after time after time after time. Those are the those are the cons, but let's get into the pros. Uh, this is such an elegant presentation. It feels so teetotally to me. Uh, there's just something about the premise of making tea and the riding the rails and the weather and all that, but uh, between Elevensies and this, I just feel so aristocratic while playing. I have to stop short of using terrible British accents. Uh, the gameplay is smooth, just smooth gameplay, like a chocolate liqueur that dribbles down a gentle mendo. Uh, it's just very smooth. You're not going to find a lot of hiccups or, or, or oddities that, that make it hard to teach, make it hard to play. Uh, I enjoy, you know, it's, it doesn't have, it's not a, a, a combat game, and so there's 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 a civilized conflict where you're uh, you know it's the classic messing of plans by thwarting access to those plans. It's Alubari and the forty leaves kind of uh, in 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 fighting and such. So the game is on rails, you know again it, you know, literally and metaphorically. But I like that it's on rails in such a way that players only have to stop on all the significant gameplay vistas along the way. You're not bogged down in upkeep or minutia. Uh, you're simply finding points that are pivotal that you can take advantage of, uh, and you know with opportunities, sort of like a train that hurdles along its inevitable destination, and you decide when to take the pictures. Uh, it's just smooth and delightful. So in summary, I am surprised with Alibari. 
Uh, I'm surprised that it's such a surprisingly unsurprising game. Uh, it's like a hobbits in a box. It's delightful, but predictable. It's congenial. It's a little tea house on the prairie. I, that might sound droll, but to me it's anything but. I enjoy the experience, and that's really the hallmark of what a great game, or you know, better than average game should be. It has trains, but it's not a train game. It has weather, but it's not really a weather-centric game like Troll Hollow. Uh, it has worker placement, but it's not a... Um, no, it's a worker placement game. That's, yeah. Uh, it's like your favorite recliner. It's a game you just pleasantly slide into and then enjoy the admittedly fairly linear ride. So, uh, pleasant, uh, worthy. Uh, you should check it out if any of that sounds interesting to you. Thanks, and we'll see you again on next time Hairbrain Games. Let me see if I can pronounce that right. Let's take a look. So let's examine Aulibaris, shall we? Let's not.